How are y'all doing tonight? Conversations. I will take everyone out for drinks afterward. My treat. So my name is Melissa Jane Kronfeld. Uh, most of you just know me as MJ. I am the founder of Party for a Purpose. If you don't know what Party for a Purpose is, that's because you suck. No, I'm joking. Party for a Purpose is a, a network of people that just want to have a really fun time and learn about things that are really awesome, that are having a huge social impact in the world. Things that are making a difference, whether it's organizations like the Nomi Network, whether it's thought leaders, authors, it doesn't really matter. We just want to put people in a position to have that kind of one on one experience, that kind of intimacy that you don't often get when you Google something that you think is cool and want to learn more about it. So we provide opportunities for anybody, any age, any any size, any anything to be a part of something that's just bigger than all of us. And that's why we started Party for a Purpose. Um, so we do these events about once a month um, where we bring people together completely free of charge and we just say come meet really cool awesome people, have an awesome bite to eat, have a more awesome fair trade wine and uh, enjoy yourselves for a few hours while learning about something that I personally think is really really cool and that you don't need this sharpie. So, um, <laughs> Tonight, we are gathered to celebrate a charity that is super near and dear to my heart. I sit on the board of the Nomi Network, and I'm not going to talk too much about it um, because I'm going to let the founder of the organization talk about it. Um, but Nomi is very near and dear to my heart. Um, we're also here to celebrate the work of the U.S. Fund for UNICEF. And you don't think they need much of an introduction, I think, as kids, most a lot of kids here from the 80s probably remember the little UNICEF boxes on Halloween. So we'll let uh, Malaya talk about that in a moment. But um, before we start, I want to share something uh, with you. So those of you that know me know that I'm a fairly observant Jew. I mean, the, the, the Orthodox probably wouldn't consider me observant with my bright red shoes and my tattoos, but um, I am an observant Jew. And one of the things that we are commanded, the, I think it's the 20th commandment of the 613 rules. I know it's a lot of rules. I don't keep track either. But the 20th one is that we should tell the story. And what do we mean by the story? The story is the escape from Egypt, the Jewish escape from Egypt, the exodus, right? When we, when we escaped the bonds of slavery um, that were in, forced upon us by the Arab. And the reason why tonight is so important to me is because as a Jew, I'm commanded to tell this story every single year. And one of the things that it teaches us, both as Jews, but also as human beings, is that by telling stories, by sharing past experiences, by remembering from where we came, we can make the future better and brighter and more stable and secure for all people. So we don't fall into the same traps. So we don't repeat the same behaviors. So we don't permit other people to be enslaved the way the Yazidis are right now, right? On top of Mount Sinjar. And we'll be doing an event uh, of the Yazidis in a few months from now. But when I first met Diana and I heard her story, and the first time I met Malaya and I heard her story, I realized that these were two very powerful, two very important women that were put here on this earth for one very singular reason. And that was to make sure that they were, that the stories of the women that they saved, that the girls and boys that they worked with, were, did not fall on deaf ears, did not go unheard. That men and women like yourselves who are in a position to do something who are blessed with her really beautiful life, which you all are, because you all live here in Manhattan, or maybe New Jersey, sorry. <laughs> Sarah, I don't know where you are, but that is for you. Um, my, my right hand, Sarah, she deserves a big round of applause. But no, the reason why is because we have a responsibility to listen to what these girls are going to say, sorry, these women, what these women are going to say tonight. We have a responsibility to take the lesson that we learned from that forward and do something about it. Because I do believe in the bottom of my heart that we are the generation that will end slavery. Because if not us, then who? So tonight I'm asking each and every single one of you to stand for freedom, stand together, make a difference, 
and party for a purpose, right? Awesome. <laughs> so, I'm, without further ado, I'm going to introduce our first speaker, Malay Anchondo, from the U.S. Fund for UNICEF. Yeah. Can we get a huge round of applause? Thank you, Melissa. As she mentioned, awesome. Let's give a round of applause for Melissa, by the way, everyone. Right? Completely yeah. would not have happened without her and Party for a Purpose. I very much urge you to look them up after this, like them on Facebook, see what other events are going on, because seriously, it's really amazing what she's doing. Um, like she said, my name is Malia Otranto. I work for UNICEF USA, or US Fund for UNICEF, on their end trafficking program. A little bit about me before starting at UNICEF USA. I um, started getting involved in human trafficking at a really young age. I was super lucky to be invested in this uh, three weeks into my freshman year of college when I was looking in my sociology textbooks and I saw this term, human trafficking, and I wasn't really sure what that term meant. And so I went to my sociology professor and I said, Professor Brunner, what is this? And can you explain what really is going on um, in the world and if it's happening in the United States? And she couldn't really give me, you know, any answer. She said, Malia, look it up um, and then get back to me. Maybe we can figure out some more. And that's exactly what I did. I spent seven hours Googling, going on a bunch, Palantir, everything that you can think of, coming back with over a hundred different pages of statistics and reports and case summaries from everywhere. And I went into my common room where 15 of my friends were hanging out and watching TV. And I stood on top of a table that was similar to this and I said, everyone stop what you're doing. We all need to know that human trafficking is happening right here in the United States. Look at these stats, look at what's going on. This is not something that we should not be talking about. We have to talk about it. And I'll never forget this because Every single one of them, when I still hold them very dear to my heart, laughed. They laughed at me. They said, Malia, stick to your law stuff. You don't know what you're talking about. Human trafficking, it's not that big of a deal, and it's definitely not happening right here. Now, I tell you this story because it's exactly what led me to get into the field that I work in right now, and exactly what led me to work at Polaris Project, to work internationally for a year on this issue and to now work at UNICEF USA on their end trafficking project. Awareness and advocacy and education are crucial to combating human trafficking, to making sure that one day we live in a world that's completely untouched from modern day slavery. That's why I do what I do. Because at the end of the day, right now in this very moment, we live in a world where the act of buying and selling another human being for profit is illegal everywhere. But it's the same world where this type of crime happens virtually everywhere. A crime that exploits men and women and boys and girls of all ages, of all races, of all ethnicities. It's a criminal enterprise that makes 150 billion, not million, not thousand, billion dollars a year. It's a crime that enslaves more than 27 million people <coughs> worldwide. Now I knew someone that used to be another statistic in the 27 million. And I wanna tell you her story, because I think it's incredibly important to the work that we do here. When I worked and lived in South Africa, I worked with a trafficking survivor named Lona. Now, month by month, I would gain her trust. We would talk about silly topics, like, Britney Spears, Beyonce, and reality TV. Now, months passed, and out of the blue, one day in May, after working with her for five months, we were sitting on the couch of the safe house that she lived in, and she looked at me and she said, I've been listening to the Star Spangled Banner on repeat. And I said, Lona, what are you doing? Why are you listening to that? 
And out of the blue, she just started belting the lyrics of this song. And her eyes, her eyes got bigger and her voice got so loud when she got to the part where it's saying, land of the free. And she looked at me after, after the giggles and after I told her for the 10th time, why did you listen to this song? She looked at me and she said, Malia, you are so lucky. You're so lucky to be from a place where bad people, they don't exist, and slavery doesn't happen. And it killed me, it killed me, honest to God, to have to tell this girl that I worked with for months, to give her hope, to empower her, to bring her a brighter day, that that just simply was not the case. That our country that we live in is not immune to bad people. And that right now, human trafficking still does happen here, at least for the time being. Now I tell you all this because Lona isn't alone in thinking that human trafficking doesn't happen here. We think of the term as some sort of abstract thing that happens to foreign places to people whose names that we can't pronounce, but that's not true. Human trafficking happens here in our own backyards, here in the United States, here, right here in New York City. It's happening every day, every hour, and it's happening every minute. Now, as I glance around the room, I see that there are some faces who are learning about human trafficking for the first time tonight. And I also see some faces who have decided to make this an issue that they strive for to end for their entire career. No matter who you are or what you do, how little you know or how much you know, I can promise you one thing. You all have the ability to make a difference, to lessen your slavery imprint, to help combat modern day slavery, each and every one of you. And it starts today. There are so many different things that all of you, any of you can do in order to help eradicate modern day slavery. Everyone take out your phone right now. Take them out. I want every single one of you to put this number in your phone. This is the first, if, if nothing else, you can leave here knowing that you did one thing tonight to help end human trafficking, one thing to make sure that you're being conscious, that you're helping in some small way. 888 3737. 888. I'll say that again, because I know that I talk very fast. 888-3737-888. That is the National Human Trafficking Hotline. I worked on this hotline. 24-7, 365 days of the year. If you see something, you say something. Anyone can call. Potential victims community members, students, law enforcement, anyone. And now, you all can call. That's the first step. The first step is knowing, the first step is seeing, and then it's actually doing something about it. No matter where you go after this, there are ways for you to get involved afterwards. There are ways for you to lessen your imprint. Learn the signs of trafficking. Do a Google search. Go on slaveryfootprint.org and figure out what your slavery imprint is. Whether the scarf that you're wearing or the watch I have on right now, what are you doing to help drive trafficking and what can you do then to help lessen your imprint? Buy fair trade products. 
There are so many different things depending on what your skill sets are, what your hobbies are, what your time commitment is to make a difference. So that one day, whatever time that day is, I can say to Lona, hey, remember that one time you asked me that question? And I had to tell you that human trafficking had happened here? I can go back and tell her that that's not the case. That human trafficking doesn't happen here. And that one day, with all of your help, it simply just won't happen anywhere. It starts today. Thank you. I'm a grown ass bitch. I am 32 years old. This girl is under 25. And that is why I know we will be the generation that ends slavery. Let's give her one more round of applause. <laughs> the distinct honor, and I've done this quite a few times, I think over, over the past two years, of introducing my like best friend in the universe, <laughs> Diana Mao, who um, I met two years ago, and who I remember our first glass of wine together, or the, the we two glasses, oh, I think, that we had We were in ex slavery! <laughs> yeah! Um, no, but I, I remember the first glass of wine that we had together, and I was like, Oh my God, she's so awesome, I want her to be my friend. And now, um, two years later, not only do I have the like huge honor of sitting on the board of the Nomi Network, but I get the distinct honor of co-chairing another organization, which is the Nexus Human Trafficking Working Group um, with Diana, and I also get to text and call her like 10 times a day when I have boy problems. But um, <laughs> the, um, I'm so honored and thrilled to introduce my best friend, Diana Mao, who is the co-founder of the Nomi Network, and probably one of the most inspiring, um, intelligent, amazing, and beautiful inside and out women I've ever known in my life. Diana. Wow, that is a I remember when I was speaking at Nexus two years ago, I saw MJ sitting like here, and I was like, she really needs to join the anti-trafficking movement in my mind. I'm like, she really needs to join. Like, I just see her as a catalytic force, and you all being here is definitely proof that she is a catalyst in this movement. Uh, before I share about Nomi and kind of why I started Nomi, um, I'm gonna share a quick video. I feel like visual is always powerful. It's only one minute. So 